Welcome to the Tornado Archive update announcement and our version two explorer with some how to's and some hidden or even special features. This is Michael and I've already introduced you to the site and some of the version one features. And in that video, I teased all of the things that we might be doing next. And an awful lot of what I referred to in the end of that video ended up coming true just six months later. Real quick though, if you'd like to help support the site, you can join as a Patreon for as little as a dollar. And that dollar goes to paying for server costs. It doesn't do anything more than that. And potentially some additional functions that we may need to pay for in the future or server upgrades. But until that happens, any amount that's above and beyond what we actually need to pay for the site is gonna be donated to a disaster relief charity of some kind. So don't worry about us actually trying to turn a profit off the site. It's meant to be free. It's meant to be available to everyone. And we're not intending to profit from disaster metrics. But if you do donate to our Patreon, you'll be offered a link to our Discord server where you can watch our ongoing development updates as they happen, or even discuss with the team and suggest ideas and things like that. But on that note, let's jump right into it. Again, the site is tornadoarchive.com. And uh, once you're here, click the Data Explorer. Those of you familiar with the first iteration of the site will immediately notice some changes. Like for example, uh, we've switched to the Mapbox Terrain Relief Map, which is kind of fun. Also, there's now environments available for lots of dates. If there are any dates after 1950 in the United States, Canada, or anywhere in Europe where there were at least one violent tornado, that's an EF4 or EF5, or if there were three or more significant tornadoes, that's a EF2 or F2 or higher. Additionally, we added any significant tornado day after 2010, as well as many other special days. All of these are modeled using the ERA5 reanalysis data. And what that really means is the Euro model run in reverse towards the past using observations and uh, data that was on hand to kind of reconstruct what the weather on the world was doing. All right, so to help understand how this works, you need to pick a date, a uh, 24 hour period up to 72 hours where there were tornadoes that met that criteria and you can zoom in. And then if you click in the environment tab, you can switch to temperature, upper level winds. And a really handy thing is the Cape and Hodographs map, which shows you the wind profiles as they change with height against the amount of uh, convective available potential energy, which is one way we measure the strength of storms in an environment, overlaid together on one nice map with all of the tornadoes that happened that day. Even better, you can animate that data by hitting the play button, and it will actually draw the tornadoes as they occurred on the hour, along with the environment for that hour, which is just simply amazing to look at. You can actually just watch the tornadoes wipe across the screen uh, in the environment that's displayed there. If you're not sure what days contain an environment that, uh, um, that you want to model, you can actually use the surprise me function on the time page. Hit surprise me and it'll switch to a different date. Like in this case, it switched me to March 15th, 1984. Here's another one, May 6th, 1955 or March 5th, 1989. The surprise me function will take you to any modeled environment that we have. Another way you can find uh, data is to zoom out on the timeline and any areas that you see in green are clickable. So if there was a day that it's modeled, you can click that little green bar up at the top and it'll take you to that date and show you the model data for that date. Now I am going to do something really fun and I am going to remove the date, which will show me all the tornadoes in the United States and Canada and Mexico. And if I want, I can go to the filters tab and then change the domain to some other part of the world or the entire world. And if I switch it to world, you're going to see it pan out and it's going to show you every tornado that we have in our database all over the world. Europe, China, Australia, Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, Chile, Mexico, it's all there. There are other countries out there that we don't have that data does exist, but uh, at this point, they're just harder to, it's just harder to work with uh, those particular data sets. Um, not that any of these were all that easy. Data sets from around the world are quite difficult to deal with and to make them all make sense together was a heck of a project. Uh, there is a blog post from Malcolm that you can go see, uh, or you can click on the sources link in the corner and that will take you to a page 
showing you uh, what the challenges are with the different data sets that are available and how good we think they are relative to each other. Just suffice it to say, no one has ever even attempted to do something like this. It's just an amazing accomplishment uh, that this team has been able to put together to take all of these weird disparate data sets from like Bermuda and somehow to make them make sense alongside data sets like the United States, which, you know, even that's been a challenge. Instead of uh, just stopping back at 1950, we go all the way back into the Thomas Grizzulis era, all the way back to 1880 with uh, uh, violent and F3 tornadoes from him. So putting all this data together is just truly amazing. It's never been attempted before. I, I really hope you enjoy it and uh, enjoy the hard work uh, that this team has really put together. And I'm really proud of everybody for doing it. Me, I've just been uh, the guy pounding the drum. Uh, I've been the cheerleader. Uh, I've been coordinating the project and helping people you know, get issues resolved or get to the resources they need. And I've been funding it where needed uh, in order to get this off the ground because I'm just extremely passionate about it. I try to help any way that I can. I helped uh, with uh, getting the model data downloaded, for example. So it's not like I'm just behind the scenes just telling people what to do or just spending money. Uh, I'm very deeply involved in the project as well. Uh, happy to be a part of it and glad we have so many people willing to pitch in their time and effort into something so cool. Now, environment data only works when you choose a domain other than world. And uh, for now, we only have North America and Europe with model data that may change soon and you need to be looking at a specific date now one other way that you can find interesting days that have been modeled is to go in and click on something like a violent tornado like in this case in ukraine and then click on the date uh, that comes up in the pop-up box and that will switch you to all of the tornadoes from that date as well as if available the environment data for that particular date extremely useful quality of life hack where you can just find a tornado that you want to investigate and you want to check out what that day was like. Bam, you're right there. You can literally see a low pressure system right here. Uh, the winds at the surface that are backing. If I didn't know any better, I would say without the tornadoes painted on the screen, this looks kind of like a tornado day. So uh, anyway, it's very cool to just see uh, environment data in Europe and tornadoes in Europe. I also mentioned that you can do up to 72 hours at a time of environment data. In this case, I'm going to show you the animation of the tornadoes and environment background that happened during the Hurricane Ivan sequence of September 2004. And I can just play that back. And by the way, you can change the speed. Um, it's extremely fluid. Another shout out to Tim. Tim, who managed to leverage hardware accelerated model graphics on a website. My mind is totally blown, at least on how fast this moves and how smooth it is. Anyway, there it is. That's 72 hours of Hurricane Ivan going up the East Coast, producing tornado after tornado after tornado all along the East Coast. And you can see all 72 hours of it in its full glory using the ERA-5 reanalysis data. Just crazy to even think that such a thing exists. So now the rules are that if you want to be able to see environment data, uh, you need to select a period of time that's less than 72 hours that contains environment data that we've installed and that you've selected a individual domain, not the world domain. So if you are in a situation where you're like, well, I think this data should be modeled. Well, just make sure you've met those conditions. You're looking at only one domain at a time and that uh, you've selected a period of less than 72 hours and that there actually is environment data available uh, using that uh, little handy green rectangle above the date. In the filters tab, you can now filter by country. So make sure you're in the correct domain and choose country equals and then whichever country you want to choose. Now, real quick, I want to show you what some of the issues are with the data sets that we have. So right now we have data from Environment Canada from 1980 to 2010 and then a separate data set that goes from 2016 to 2021 uh, that comes from uh, a site called NDT. In the future, we're hoping to get access to another data set that's being developed uh, that it fills in all of those gaps. But for now, it's two different data sets and uh, they don't quite meet up with each other. And you'll notice with other countries too, uh, like in South America, where there's just huge gaps. 
um, or there's better data for certain decades than there is for others. Or in the case of Australia, uh, some of the data is just straight up missing. It's, you know, it goes back to something like 1700, uh, but contains a lot of, or doesn't contain a lot of missing tornadoes. But there's, in this case, again, uh, a new data set out there being developed, not by our team, but by somebody else who's uh, reconstructing all of that tornado information going back literally centuries. And we're hoping we can get access to that too. Uh, and I can't make any promises right now. But uh, anyway, some of the data sets are not as perfect as what we're going to see with the United States or with Europe. Another really important update we've made is that we now have data from 2020 and 2021. Uh, we had to wait until only recently uh, for the Storm Prediction Center to release their 2020 data set. And then we're also using uh, NCEI and disaster assessment tool data for the tornadoes in 2021, uh, which means that it's unofficial, uh, but at least it's better than not existing at all. So for the first time ever, there is a tornado database website that contains the entire U.S. data set and goes all the way up to last year, not several years ago. Uh, so that's pretty exciting, too, the fact that you can access those. And, of course, that means you can now check out the most recent and somewhat infamous tornadoes like the Mayfield tornado. And, of course, we have model data for that date as well. You'll also notice that for the two most recent years, uh, we don't have just straight tornado paths. They're the actual center line of these uh, tornadoes. Um, that's true of the most recent couple of years. However, going back to much older, more infamous tornadoes, we have high resolution paths for some of those famous days as well. For example, here's Woodward, and then there's the entire Greensburg tornado sequence. All the tornadoes are drawn as they occurred along their center lines rather than just being straight line paths. This just gives you way more high fidelity and, and helps us understand how a tornado went from location A to B, but somehow impacted towns that, uh, you know, didn't seem like they were going to be in the path, but definitely were. Uh, we can truly visualize what those uh, some of those tornado days are, even some of the more bizarre ones like the Greensburg occlusion. So yeah, there's all sorts of Easter egg tornadoes in there to go check out uh, and infamous tornado days with high fidelity tracks. So Give it a whirl. So what about the future? Um, we're talking about in the near future, uh, being able to save animated environment data as a GIF file, for example. We will be adding higher resolution model graphics from the RUC. I believe uh, that is a 12 kilometer resolution. Don't quote, quote me on that, it's 12 kilometer, whereas ERA-5 is a 30 kilometer resolution. So it's uh, more than double uh, the resolution of the uh, uh, environment graphics that you're seeing today. Additionally, we're going to access NCAR data and get environment data for tornadoes going all the way back to, I think, as far back as 1850. Uh, currently, the data on ERA-5 is limited back to 1950. That's just because that's all that it exists uh, from the ERA-5. NCAR, however, goes back much, much further. You can look forward to even more high-fidelity tornado tracks as more data sets are found and uh, those are built out. We might get into the idea of importing tornado data from DAT uh, on a more monthly-ish basis. So you could see uh, 2022 data uh, still in 2022. We'll see how that goes. I won't make too many promises there, but uh, it's being discussed. We're also still working hard on the F2 tornadoes uh, from Thomas Grizzulis books, uh, books plural, um, going all the way back to 1680, including all of the violent tornadoes from that period. Uh, so another 200 years worth of tornado data could be added to the site for the United States in the near future. In the more distant future, we're talking about creating a community function on the website where, where users can submit additional tornadoes or modify existing tornado tracks or split tornadoes up, etc. Uh, community contributed content that will be moderated by us uh, and then updated to the site uh, as it's available. So people like yourself, if you know of an event in the past where you can see that there was a straight line tornado track, but you know it went through your neighborhood, anyone potentially could offer updates uh, to tornadoes. We're also looking at setting it up so that each tornado has an event profile 
uh, as well as each tornado day or tornado event sequence having its own event profile. Uh, that's something again that we're looking at in the future. In that case, uh, you could click on a tornado or a tornado event and see different media and graphics and statistics of that event or that in individual tornado. We're also starting to work directly with other sites uh, like Tornado Talk, which is a great resource if you wanna check them out. They do articles and write-ups uh, on various infamous tornado events. Uh, our focus is primarily on the scientific and statistical background on tornado and climatology, uh, where Tornado Talk is more about the individuals that were impacted. Um, you know, the, the people that lost loved ones and the property that was lost uh, and the, the real stories told by the people that were impacted. Uh, so there's a great dovetail there. Uh, you know, it's one thing to just see the statistics and the weather behind why an event happens. It's an entirely different thing uh, to know the stories of the people that have been impacted by these events. So you may see uh, cases where tornadoes link you to the Tornado Talk website or where Tornado Talk actually uses our graphics and data uh, to contextualize uh, some of those story-based events. And I'll leave you with this little tidbit. You can use the period and comma key to browse through the environment data. Kind of cool. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for dropping in and checking this video out, and I hope you enjoy the website. And if you got any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, definitely hit me up on my channel. Check out the Contact Us and About page to learn more about us. And uh, hit up our Patreon if you're excited about what we've done uh, and want to just tip us and want to help make sure that uh, this site continues to be available and free for years and decades to come. Until the next one, I'll see you out there.